that's just TMI. With your host, Dee Dee and Sir Drake. Yeah, man. Welcome back to our channel. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> that's just TMI. Fine. Thought provoking. <laughs> well, do you Welcome want to sing back. instead of talk today? Um, next time. Next time. No, we're no, no, not next time series. either. No, no, no. There's no series of any kind of music whatsoever. Yeah. Um, this is not what well, we're here we are. Yes. This is like good to be back. What is this? Yes. Episode four. This is episode four. Wow. Oof. Time flies. Time flies, right? I remember the first video when I was saying, this is like my baby. Can you not cry on camera? You're right, because it never looks good when people cry on camera. No, I don't think it'll look good if you cry on camera. Ooh. That's a bit true. Whatever. I, I can't see I've that. seen her cry before, and it's like, it's a lot. Okay, first of all, it was like a gentle tear. It no, it's not a gentle <laughs> tear. It's and like one of those tears, like when you're getting beaten, because you had one extra, you, like, you thing of... That bad. You don't think it was that bad? I don't think so. Like, well, let's not do it again. again. All right, okay. fine. So whatever. No tears, no singing, no <sighs> more nights, whatever the song goes. So anyways, here <laughs> here, here we are. Yes. Um, for episode number four. four. And um, as we've tried to do uh, in all of the other yes. three um, segments, um, spots that we've done thus far, we've tried to talk about relevant uh, contemporary issues mm -hmm. and uh, without apology yes we have a C caribbean canadian yes um experience that we are hoping to um share with those here in our city mm -hmm. as though as well as those around the world yes and we're really excited for this and like dre said mm -hmm. no apology we are caribbean canadian and it's our experience and yeah. if your experience is different we are more than happy to hear what you have to say. Please write yeah. it in the comment section because it may open us, open up our minds to yeah. something different, something we aren't aware of that sure. may be taking place here in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. today we're going to talk a little bit about the black community mm -hmm. um, from different angles, whether it's on the police brutality or... Mm -hmm. um, we're going to touch a bit on black on black crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about that. We're just going to talk about our community and, and what we've seen, what yeah. we can do. Yeah. How can we, we make a change? Yeah. You know, because we don't want to be stagnant. We don't mm -hmm. want to see the same things that we've been seeing for years. So let's get into it. And of course, we also don't want to ignore um, some real realities. I think, like, one of the challenges that I see, um, and I've had these conversations and no, I'm not putting anybody on blast because I've had multiple conversations like this. It's almost like some people just don't want to have like real conversations. Yes. About real things. You know, like even in the church setting, um, we often say, you know, let's just pray about it, um, forgive and move along. Yeah, and I yeah. believe with all of that, you know, turn the other cheek. Um, but at some point, somebody has to be like, all right, now that you've given your cheek several times mm -hmm. um where do we go um, from okay. there yeah and so the reality is is that as we continue on this journey of talking about different issues and different challenges that mm -hmm. we see out of our experience our goal is to ruffle feathers yes like we're not trying to not have you have your conversation it's just we're trying to create the conversation mm -hmm. we're planting the seed yeah so yeah you go home and you talk to yeah, people or yeah. talk, call your friends up and say yeah wait i never thought about it like this yeah that's what we want and it's interesting you know because i was talking to somebody the other day um talking about this caribbean experience mm -hmm. and what it looks like in terms of caribbean activists and i know somebody's gonna say oh but you know sir dre what about marcus garvey and whatever not yeah of course you're always gonna have some individuals who will speak up and speak out yeah but growing up i found that these conversations were relegated to the home mm -hmm. like you know like how you have your street talk and then you have your home talk and it's yes. not that people are being hypocritical yes it's just that i think for fear of being the first person to call a spade a spade mm -hmm. a lot of times we don't have these conversations yeah. Yeah. so even like wanting to talk about police brutality mm -hmm. I know that there's gonna be some that are gonna be uncomfortable about it I mean I've got 
friends who are police officers. And of course, this is not intended to be an indictment on anybody, but you know, not all police officers are serving and protecting. Yes. You know? And I think that's where, mm -hmm. I guess, the discrepancy falls because they are, I mean, I don't know if they, I think they take an oath of yeah, some yeah, sort, yeah, yeah, you know, to yeah. serve and protect yeah. and to care for us. But then at the same time, so you've taken this public oath and yeah. then in your house, you're being told, you know, okay, don't do this, don't yeah. do that because you don't want to be caught on the wrong side yeah. of the law, yeah. even though sometimes you're not even breaking the law. It's yeah. just, I am a person who may proceed, um, perceive something taking place yeah. so being a police officer who's not sure. there to serve and protect yeah. and then because i'm intimidated whether it be because he's a black man and he's strong and he's strapping and you yeah. know what he shouldn't be doing that so i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna go over there so but those are those conversations i feel like have only started happening more so because of what's happening in the world yeah and i think that part of what we're trying to do um, is keep the conversation going. Yes. Like, I think that some people, they're like, ah, oh, just, you know, if we just give them a couple of weeks or a couple of months, they'll get over it and mm -hmm. we'll get back to normal. But I think we want to be int intentional with TMI to keep the conversation going yeah. about all conversations, including some of the black experience. So, mm -hmm. of course, like, um, let's start off with the obvious, right? Um, and the obvious is Breonna Taylor. Um, I believe that one of the police officers um, that was a part of whatever that looked like, yeah. he's been either fired or put on administrative yes. leave, okay? And I don't know of another job where you can, like, kill <laughs> somebody on your job and get fired mm -hmm. or put on administrative leave. Yes. Like, if I went to my job as a pastor mm -hmm. and I shot somebody in my congregation, mm -hmm. I think I might be in jail by the end of the day. Yes. So, like, if whatever you did on your job was as such that now you are removed from duty mm -hmm. or fired from your job, yeah. then why doesn't that come with, like, a natural conviction? We're bringing you to jail. You have to take the mug shot. Mm -hmm. Like, why not? Why is that not the next natural progression? And hmm, yeah. it could be because they're law enforcement, right? So mm -hmm. they're law enforcement. And as a law enforcement officer, you have friends within the field, right? So, yeah. I mean, again, guys, this is me just talking. So I'm not talking with facts like I know any of the police officers or what's happening over there. But mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, you call a friend when you're in yeah. trouble, you're like, yeah. okay, guys, this yeah. is actually what happened. Come defend yeah. me. Yeah. Maybe they're short on police officers. No excuse. Right. I don't know what the case is. I'm sure the city will survive if those police officers were um, fired or arrested. Sure. And, and did you and did you arrested. see the video? Um, I know it was on Instagram. I know it was on um, Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, right after George Floyd was murdered, um, there was like this video clip where um, in one city in the United States, of yeah. course. Um, when, uh, I want to say, oh, was it Brianna Taylor? Whatever, mm -hmm. whichever, whichever one it was, um, when the officers were charged, mm -hmm. there were a bunch of police officers. No, it was with the George Floyd. That were around his house? Is that the well, one? No, okay. not that one, but it's probably the same story. Yeah. But there was a secondary one in a different place where there were a bunch of police officers on camera that started resigning from the police force oh. because they want to have the ability mm -hmm. to now um, still be able to um, put their foot on people's necks. Really? Absolutely. Saw the video myself. Wow. And I was like, where else uh -huh. um, are you able to just like do that? And in, in the city of Atlanta, I believe, um, there were some police officers who were actually calling in sick mm -hmm. Because if they are not able to police that way, they don't want to come to work. So if I can't put my knee on somebody else, I'm going to give up my bread, my food, my what keeps me functioning? Really? Yeah, but see, but this is the point, though. It's, it's like, and when I hear people talking about defunding, when I first heard it, mm -hmm. I had kind of like an image of what they were saying. You know, like, it was a new term for me. Yeah. Um, but as time has gone along, the idea around defunding police, it's not like some police walk with a gun and others don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The idea is that 
you would move some of the money mm -hmm. that is put into policing and put it more into some of the other social services yeah. that will also help to kind of um, reinforce some of the needs mm -hmm. above and beyond incarceration. I agree. Right? So do you yeah. think the police forces lack in, in training? within that the United States specifically or even in North America do well, you think they lack you know what we have to make some clear distinctions here right okay. because policing doesn't look the same way all over the world that is true right that is 100 um, true. when you go to the UK um, there are some places there where they're not walking around mm -hmm. with guns mm -hmm. okay um, in Europe you have some other places where um, it takes a longer period of time for someone to become a police officer. I saw that picture, right? yeah. So the idea around this is, okay, if this is such an important thing, mm -hmm. and I do believe that what police do, they are important. Yes. And I've got, like I said, police officers that are friends of mine, um, and I've known them for a long time, and I know what they've been doing in the community. So by no means is this intended to demonize all, yes. but in terms of the process, mm -hmm. I think it's still the same conversation. So um, if I want to be a whatever, I yes. generally have to go to school for two years or for four years, plus some additional whatever. Mm -hmm. Some people have to go to school for four, eight years to be able to do whatever. Yes. And here in North America, mm -hmm. you're looking at a year plus or for some a little bit less time. And I'm like, you're carrying a gun. Yep. So from start to finish, mm -hmm you have the capacity to change like the course of somebody's life somebody is is found running from the store yeah you can taser or you can pull a gun and we've seen more than enough uh, footage to really show us the power mm -hmm. um or the privilege that comes along with being a police officer mm -hmm. so in my mind I, I say to myself well maybe more training around cultural sensitivity mm -hmm. I think that that's a good place to start yeah because again you know you pull over a black guy his voice raises everybody's now tense yeah but in our culture and I mean even before we, we started filming today we were talking about some other stuff loud and whatever loud is not an indicator of now the next move is I'm gonna try and shoot you yeah. Like, I mean, I drive with water in my car all the time. I, I like water. I was telling you, yeah, I've yeah. now fallen in love with water. But think about it. A police officer pulls me over. My my, my um, armrest mm -hmm. is here. Yeah. Well, if I don't tell him what I'm doing, there's yeah. an assumption that I'm about to pull for something. Mm -hmm. And perhaps that thing is a gun. Yeah. So I don't know why that that's an assumption. I hear you. Yeah. Now, it came... Yeah. husband mm -hmm. but when we first started dating yeah. i realized something about akeem when akeem mm -hmm. gets passionate yeah, yeah, yeah akeem gets a little loud and then he starts sweating yes look you're gonna meet akeem one of these days i promise you he's a real person <laughs> but yes, i've never true. seen anybody mm -hmm. sweat unbelievable as quickly as he does unbelievable. And it, i mean don't embarrass him. All right, fine. They'll meet him. <laughs> they'll, they'll see him sweating for themselves. Yes, but Akeem gets gets loud. His his hands will start moving a yeah, little yeah, bit more. Yeah. But it's not because he's upset or yeah. he wants to fight or anything of the sort. That's just because, him. Again, he's such a cuddly, like such a nice person. He's yeah. kind, but if if he feels as though something yeah, is yeah. happening that needs to be addressed, yeah, he's he'll right speak in there. up and, and he's he'll passionate. Vocalize. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So even um earlier we wanted to to go somewhere and yeah. i said okay kim if we go let me talk and he <laughs> said why should i why should why should you have yeah, to talk yeah. why can't i talk yeah. but i mean i think it takes a lot more for me to be to be seen as the angry black woman sure um but but you guys are also perceived as being different too so this is true. not just a deandra thing or a dd Dee Dee thing yeah. this is also how culture sees extroverted black men versus black women yes right so they might see you guys as being angry people or mm -hmm. strong people yes but they don't see you as a weapon uh, of mass destruction exactly the way that they, they would see, see. yeah they, so that's why sometimes i'm mm -hmm. like okay i'll talk yeah. and then you know you can tag in yeah and it's not to to say okay keem be mute right and, but it's sometimes it's just maybe 
because of what we've seen on yeah, the news yeah, yeah, on yeah, TV. Yeah. You just want to protect yourself and maybe go the extra step. And protect step. him too. Exactly, because yeah. God knows so if nothing happened to him. Oh my goodness, you're back to this patois again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what? A, look, I feel like I should just get a t-shirt made that says no patois. How you? No code switching. <laughs> and what we'll do is we'll just put it behind this. So every time you look at the camera, you're going to be like fling a fling or whatever it is that you always say. So, But it, it is true <sighs> that at the end of the day, we are aware mm -hmm. and you are aware um, of what this looks like. I mean, he can be whatever he wants to at home in yeah. his space. But when you now move out there and something's happening and let there be some kind of, you know, it, it's it's funny because when I was walking mm -hmm. initially at some of these marches, these Black Lives Matter um, marches, yeah. um, you know, I was just looking around. And I remember when my family and I, for the first one that we went to, mm -hmm. um, because we brought our kids, there was a police officer and he came to us because, you know, there weren't a lot of families there. Yeah, there were yeah. mothers there with kids or friends, whatever, but there weren't a lot of young families mm -hmm. there. I didn't see them anyways. And, you know, when, when the police officer saw us, they were like, just be careful. And I was like looking around and I was like, there wasn't a whole lot of, of weed being smoked. Yeah, yeah. There wasn't a lot of music. There wasn't a lot of shouting. Everybody just seemed to be calm. Mm -hmm. But this officer, and I don't know what his motives are, so I'm not saying that he had ulterior motives, yeah. but in his mind, he was like, you know what, you, you just need to be careful mm -hmm. because there's a little bit of, you know, something happening over there. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, Curious George, me, I went over there to see what was happening. Not a problem. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, one of the things that I didn't love, um, you know, in the days after George Floyd's yeah. um, murder, and I don't know what the police protocol is. I should just say that so I don't know when they are dispatched to keep yeah, the peace. Yeah. I don't know what that looks like in terms of formation. Mm -hmm. But in a moment of, like that, we were downtown um, near Queens Park, mm -hmm. right? Right there in the heart of the city. The police that were actually there, yeah. they were all on the external part of the protests. Hmm. And in my mind, I'm like, if police are supposed to be serving and protecting, yeah. I would have loved to have seen them mixing and mingling in the crowd mm -hmm. versus just having a police presence yeah. surrounding. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure that um, emotions were high for them as well. Yes. You know what I mean? Because they know that people are like, Black Lives Matter, yeah. you know, take your knee off my neck. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's not that they were being... Um, celebrated in that moment but I almost feel like if they were integrated and mm -hmm. and more with the people in that moment it would have also sent a message like I know that people are like oh just kneel with us yeah, yeah. kneeling was would be cool but being with us mm -hmm. and and feeling a sense of we feel your pain we acknowledge that some of our colleagues they may be a little bit yeah. knee happy yeah. and a little whatever whatever but we are still here with you mm -hmm. and for you. Let me tell you a personal Yeah, yeah, story. yeah. So when I first came to Canada, mm -hmm. I used to say I wanted to be a police officer. What? Really? Yes. But, you know, I had friends who were like, Deandra, if we ever saw you pull us over, <laughs> we're not stopping. Like, what? Right. Like, you're short. You, you, right now you're I'm too smiling. Drunk, you know? Like, there's nothing that you could do to... I've never seen you drive, but I feel like you would be one of those police officers where the wheel is here and you would be like pulled right okay, up. First of all, is that the way that you drive? I need to call Akima as a witness because no, no I do not drive with the wheel at me right here. So not at all. But, yeah, but you're not going to gangster lean it okay, either. I can't because then my arm is just, right. you know, so, okay. so I'm in between. I have, I'm the appropriate distance from the wheel. Social distancing from the wheel. Okay. No, not that much. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. I used to say I want to be a police officer and my friends used yeah. to say, you know, mm -hmm. haha, we won't, we won't stop. Yeah. And then growing up from in Jamaica, I used to love police officers. Like really? I would go up to them, say hi. Mm -hmm. And I'm just that person. I carry that same trait up here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would say hi to police officers and they don't acknowledge me. And that used to kind of rub me the wrong way because I'm like, why? You know, say hi to me. It's the least you can do. So you kind of felt like you're at church. <laughs> Hi, happy Sabbath. And nobody says that. <laughs> but I'm saying hi to you, and yeah. it's 
it's not like I'm cutting your pay or anything or yeah. you're you're actually in the middle of serving and protecting. You're you're walking by or you're on the horse, you know the ones downtown, they're on yeah, the yeah. horse and I'm like, Hey and yeah. they're like good, yeah. good, good, and they just keep yeah. going. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and that used to rub me I mean it kinda still does, rub me the wrong way. But mm -hmm. because I grew up in a sheltered environment, right. I didn't really know a lot of the dynamics exactly yeah. and so when i started doing that in public with more of my friends yeah they were like what are you doing exactly yeah so they were looking at me like i was off and i was wrong. and i'm like what do you mean like they're just they're just people yeah. who have power yeah. why not say hi to them yeah. and now i'm not saying that because of what's happened if i see a police officer i'm not going to say hi but i am yeah. i am more aware yeah. of what, what what is taking place now so yeah. i may not put myself in a position where i may be going over to say hi and they think that i'm coming over there too okay so, so fine but here's here's the million dollar question and this is the touchy one okay but we have to talk about it as well mm -hmm. because here's what some people are saying yeah uh, i'm not saying i agree and i'm not saying i disagree mm -hmm. i'm just saying here's what some people are saying okay when we talk about policing and black lives matter mm -hmm. um since then especially when we look at places like chicago yeah um there's a lot of black on black crime mm -hmm. and here's what some people are saying they're like as a community you guys are very hypocritical yeah because here you're saying police officers take your knee off my neck black life and you're so passionate mm -hmm. and everybody's like tears running down their yeah. eyes and angry yeah. and there's lines with people standing in front of the SWAT team and they're so upset mm -hmm. but then where there is no police presence yeah. you've got black people who are killing one another where does that fit see there's a huge difference okay. at least in my mind's eye okay if you think differently let us know in the comment section but in my mind's eye Deandra Dee Dee the black female, mm -hmm. if I were to go on road and fight um, Latoya, another black female. Sure, yeah. Why does she have to be Latoya, by I the way? I don't know. That's the first name that popped oh up in my head. Oh, my goodness. We're gonna I think it's because of Latoya Forever. I was watching her on um, Instagram. L was it Latoya Lockett from Destiny's Child? Oh, there's that too, but no, that L wasn't Latoya about Jackson? It. Okay, those weren't the ones I was talking about. So, Anyways. All right, fine. Um, so, Latoya. So, yes. So, me, Didi. And now I'm going to say Shanika. Because no, that's worse. Oh, okay. oh my goodness. Me, Didi, and Latoya are outside hope, fighting. I hope that Akeem edits just that point five. You I'm went from Lakeem. Just fine. Okay. Let her be Deandra. Me, Didi, is outside fighting Deandra. <laughs> and me, Didi, fighting Deandra. Yeah. That's just a black person fighting another black person. Yeah, yeah, sure. Not saying that it's right. But if me, Didi police officer yeah. um, um, representative for the law ser to serve and protect wants to go and fight Deandra that that looks worse because I have power this is power trip everybody sees me in my uniform and recognizes well or is supposed to recognize the power and I feel like when a person in power abuses their power to do something whatever it is yeah. that's worse than if it were just two regular old dds fighting i hear you um and here's the thing that i'm i'm wrestling with because yeah. to me i don't know how we turn on and off the switch on mm -hmm. this thing right so i agree that the two issues are separate but i'm now trying to understand why it is that at times mm -hmm whether through systemic racism, um, police brutality, and really what we're talking about is lateral violence. Yes. I say to myself, how do we line up in one sense and say, get your knee off my neck, mm -hmm. and then two minutes later, we're now like shooting people. And, and it's interesting, like at times it seems like we don't even regard mm -hmm. our own lives. And of course, this is a conversation that people don't really want to have, but we're having yeah. that conversation. Um, because really what I'm saying is, is that if Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. they cannot matter more or less depending on who kills us. 
I think I that life that is life. Yes. And I think that all lives, and I'm not saying black lives don't matter. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, we know. Let me just make oh. say make sure I say <laughs> this. I'm not transitioning. Yes. Black lives, they matter. His shirt. Right? Black lives matter. In addition to black lives matter, I really also do believe that black lives have to also matter amongst each other. Yes. So I think that if um, people see the way that we kind of um, view our um, view our community, if, if people see that we are, are, are respecting ourselves, then maybe it's not so easy mm -hmm. for a police officer who may be struggling with his or her own racial biases, mm -hmm. they might think a little bit higher of us because they see how we are. Yes. I'll make a point. Look, my foot just fell asleep. Oh, oh. my God. Your foot fell asleep. You know, this is so good. Maybe we could talk about some of the statements we make in our community. Because uh, I don't know. Like, I've, I've seen people put a baby to sleep. But I look, can I just digress? How does a foot fall asleep? So, anyways, I guess the same way that shoulder fling fling a foot. <laughs> Go ahead with your story, though. No, I agree with you 100% in yeah. that aspect. Like, we as black people, yeah, it's kind of clear sometimes that we don't respect each other, you know? So, if I'm looking from an outside perspective, they don't even respect each other. So, like, it doesn't matter what happens or what is done because X, Y, Z. Or maybe they just didn't think that the uprising would have happened because... They think that we don't respect each other. You know, there's so many layers to this, um, Didi, because here's the thing. When you begin to look at all of the different um, statistics that are out there, mm -hmm. this is the byproduct of what I think systematic rela um, racism, racism looks like. There's a relationship to everything. Mm -hmm. So when somebody comes to police me and they go into some of these communities where you know, boarded up windows and crack houses yeah. and liquor stores and, you know, all of these different things. I think that culturally, mm -hmm. people see us a certain kind of way. Yeah. And because they see us a certain kind of way, we are demoralized, we are devalued. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, even though we're talking about life, mm -hmm. I do believe that there is a hierarchy of how we see lives. That's why some black person can be accused of a crime and they're shot dead. Yep. And then another person can do a different kind of crime and then the police officers take that criminal out for a cheeseburger. I, do you remember that one? I don't remember that one, but wow. I saw... No, no, no. This one blew my mind. Yeah. It was on Instagram and it was a picture of a Caucasian man and he had just committed some sort of crime. Are you talking about the, the guy that was running around naked with the knife? No, no, no. Oh, that's another one. That's <laughs> another Lots another of stories, one. yeah. But the white man was the criminal, and he the crime that he did was against a black person. Yeah. And the black person's picture looked like a mugshot. So if uh, you didn't even read it, yeah. you would have thought that the black person Guilty. did something yeah. to the white man, but it was the other way around. Yeah. And the, 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 um, the caption to the picture was just like, think about it. So mm -hmm. read the read the the, the news report, yeah. which basically says the Caucasian man did something to the black man. But yeah. if you don't read it, if you remove that and you just look at the just pictures, just go based on the image itself. You're looking at the black man and you're like, "Wow, you are guilty! How yeah. dare you!" And you know what's interesting? Let me just also tell you this. Um, and one of the things I try, I, I shouldn't say I try not to do. I don't do. Mm -hmm. I don't add the names to the stories because I want to make sure that I protect people's ability to express themselves. Yeah. But I've had several of these conversations recently where you even have some individuals saying, Pastor, this thing happened in March. Mm -hmm. How many more times are you going to talk about really? the same thing over and over and over? Okay. And I'm hearing that from black people. I, I struggle with this, right? Mm -hmm. Because in my mind, I say to myself, for more than 400 years, mm -hmm. we have suffered oppression. Yes. For 400 years. Mm -hmm. um, how, how then do you say over 
a four month period because this has really ramped up because of what happened to George Floyd. Yes. How can you be tired in less than four months mm -hmm. hearing about what's been happening to people? Yes. One particular person I was um, speaking to, they even said to me, um, I don't want to hear about this anymore because I don't know anybody that this has happened to. This hasn't happened to my family or my friends or anybody mm -hmm. I know. So I don't connect with all of this um, feelings and tensions and emotions. I don't know about this. Mm -hmm. I've trained my children to be a certain kind of way yeah. and they know what my expectations are. And so I don't expect these things to be happening to them. And I was like, wow. Yeah. As a person of color, yeah. are you really saying that because it doesn't happen to you, that it doesn't matter? And I actually mm -hmm. think that that's part of what the challenge is, mm -hmm. right? I know we started off with this policing thing, but I, I feel like this is a good pivot here yeah. because I actually believe that if we all had a voice that mm -hmm. said, until this is no longer an issue for any of us, yeah. it is an issue for all of us, I think that on some level we would be setting the bar mm -hmm. as to what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. And I think because of how society has moved throughout yeah. at least my life, yeah. as soon as something goes up, it comes down. Like in terms of yeah, yeah, a yeah. news news yeah, report yeah. comes out and then it goes down. So yeah. I think people, ex I guess, thought or expected that when this happened, it would just die off over Can time. Can we just remind them? Brianna Taylor's yes. murderers have still not been charged and we don't understand why we don't get that anyways back to our regular yes. broadcast yeah <laughs> so i feel like people are either close-minded um they are living in a world where i guess maybe a bubble of yeah. some sort I or don't know. maybe maybe they force themselves to put to be in that bubble because they can't yeah. they're not ready to open up and deal with what's actually happening in the world because god forbid but if it was their immediate family, I'm sure they wouldn't want people to stop talking about it. But because it doesn't affect them personally, yeah. it's like, okay, we've, we've talked about it. And that's one of the it. reasons why I'm actually happy that even though we're north of the border, mm -hmm. we are also using our voices here yeah. to create awareness. Like, this is not an American issue. This is a global pandemic. You know, yeah. I was on a, on a discussion recently um, where where um, I had some social workers on mm -hmm. at the church and we were talking about this as, as, as the issue. And really, this is a health crisis. Mm -hmm. Because here's what the impact is. When a police officer kills a black person, if that person has a child, mm -hmm. those children go through trauma. Yeah. When they go through trauma, it's not just not having their father or mother come home there's also a socio-economical piece to this. So let's just say mom has a job, whether it's full-time or part-time, yeah. that's an, a number. Mm -hmm. Whether father has a part-time job or a full-time job, that's a number. Yeah. When you put those two numbers together, that family is greatly impacted by the removal of half of whatever that salary is. Yeah. Now here's the other piece to it. It's not just the removal of that person from the family in terms of the, the the social and the emotional and the psychological whatever but we also do know that black people are disproportionately paid lower salaries mm -hmm. so you're not talking about um two incomes of a hundred thousand yeah, dollars yeah. making two yeah you're talking about two incomes of 25 to thirty thousand dollars mm -hmm. and now you've cut that in half and the cost of living is as Only such, increasing. right? Yeah. Is as such that that half of the income mm -hmm. wasn't enough anyways. Yeah. Those two incomes mm -hmm. weren't enough anyways. And so now you 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 kill these people. And and you know, when you look at the numbers, yeah. I, I, I'm a numbers person. I like mm -hmm. to look at the numbers. And here's what the reality is, um, Deandra. The people that are being killed yeah. are black people mm -hmm. in the prime of their life. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at this 18 to 40, 45 age range. Well, that's when you are earning the most amount of money, yep. right? That's when you're, you're developing yeah. um, what it is. That's when you're trying to pay down on your mortgage. Mm -hmm. That's when you're trying to buy certain things. That's when you're trying to save some money for your kids to go to college and or university. Yeah. 
they're not shooting people that are 50 and older. Yeah. And that's why I say to myself, hmm, mm -hmm. if we could just add value to our community yeah. at the time where they are most contributing to our society, yeah. maybe um, what this looks like long term, it would just change. It would look different because who's to say what an 18 to a 40 or 45 year old man yeah. would be able to be become. Mm -hmm. We know that um, developmentally, most people's brains are fully developed at 25. Yeah. So me at 18, when you shoot me over Skittles or mm -hmm. you shoot me because um, of some um, supposed counterfeit money, yeah. whoever I may be or what I look like, if you give me a certain amount of time or age to grow up and change perhaps the way that I dress, knowing that I can't be in my jeans in a certain kind of way. I may not be able to have my hair braided in a certain kind yeah, of way. Yeah, yeah. I may choose once I'm fully mature to change the way yeah. that I actually process or the way that you see me. And perhaps I could do a whole lot more. Yeah. But if you're killing me mm -hmm. at the prime of my life, I never have the opportunity to leave behind a better legacy yeah. for my family, for my wife, for my children, for my community, yeah. for the world to see that I'm more than just whatever it is. I'm more than just a guy screaming out for my mama yeah. in the middle of the floor while I release myself because yeah. I'm literally dying on camera. You know, something you mentioned that actually it's resonating yeah. with me. It's the fact that the the people that are left behind, be it the wife, the children, and the how girlfriend, saying, the boyfriend, yeah. or whatever, yeah. And how you're saying the 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 impact that it has on their minds, and I'm thinking of of a child. So I had a great, I mean, I still do. I have great relationships with my parents. Mm -hmm. I will talk to them every other day, every day. Not a yeah. week goes by and I don't talk to my parents. Mm -hmm. And I know that that was. That was like fostered from yeah. being with them as a child. Yeah, all, all the way stuff. up. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm and I'm thinking now to to wake up one day and not see my parents, even in my grown age. Right. I know that I could. I've... Or to have them taken away like that. Exactly. Because I think it's one thing when you lose your family to um, a disease. Yes. Yes. Right? right. That's hard. Yes. But we understand chronic illness. But specifically in that way. Yeah especially as a child developing and i know i'm speaking specifically to the george floyd yeah. um yeah. one where his daughter now um a university gave her like full scholarship yeah. um she is a partner for walt disney or something stuff like that people and, have and, come forward to help yeah yes, sure and and great that that's yeah, great. fantastic yeah. sure money appreciate but it how are we helping her Emotionally. Uh, emotionally, mentally, like how how is she dealing with this? And okay, let's extend. How is the wives or the mothers, the mm -hmm. the mothers of the people who have passed away, the the girlfriends, the boyfriends? Yeah. How how are we helping them um, function and go back into? And their you life? know what's interesting? Mm -hmm. I'm glad you actually said that. That's a good transition because I was watching the um, Ahmad Arbery yeah. funeral, mm -hmm. and um, one of the mothers from another young black man that was gunned down yeah. was sitting down beside Ahmaud Arbery's mm -hmm. uh, mother and the two of them wept. And that shot when the camera hit them, yeah. something kind of, sort of, whatever, whatever. I don't cry all the time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll yeah. cry if I need to. Yeah. But even though I'm not a mother, I think I understood mm -hmm. what it was that they were experiencing, yeah. right? So I could see myself in the coffin because you know, the complexion thing, man. I'm a big black guy, a yeah, big yeah, black yeah. man. I can see that, but then I can also see the pain. And what people don't get is that trauma doesn't have a shelf life to it. Mm -hmm. So you know, like how you, you know, you'll go and you'll see that there's a can and it's expired, yep. everybody knows because yep. it's labeled, they throw it in the garbage, but trauma doesn't have a timeline. As a matter of fact, look at what has been happening with Kanye West. Mm -hmm. We are literally watching mental health unfolding yeah. as this guy is still talking about the death of his mother. Mm -hmm. So when um, trauma happens yeah. in that kind of way, there is a psychological thing 
that happens to us. Yeah. So even when we, we look and we see, okay, the police deal with us this way in our communities, this is the way that mm -hmm. we deal with one another. Here's the dirty little secret that nobody's talking about. Yeah. I believe that traumatized people mm -hmm. traumatize people. Yeah. It's almost like when you the talk hurt about hurt people, people, hurt people, hurt people. Yeah. And yeah. the reality is, is that I understand to some degree, I'm not condoning it, mm -hmm. but systematic racism is as such that even the lives that we should value, yeah. they no longer have value to us because of this extensive trauma. Wow, that's actually very deep. Mm -hmm. hey! Hey! No, like, that is actually really All good. Right. And it's, it's making me think, this is the thought provoking part. Mm -hmm. Cause wow, because it's all we've experienced yeah it's all we it's know it's a sum of it's all what we've seen yeah so it's what we end up doing yeah and it's not even like we were trained yeah. to do it yeah it's just what we know yeah yeah oh. and you know what maybe i'll say this i know that there's a lot of things that we are going to talk about but maybe i, I can put a plug because i'm not sure what we yeah. will talk about in our next um episode yeah but maybe it would be good for us to talk um about the trauma of the the removal of the black father to the black family Ooh, whether through trauma good. or otherwise i mean that's a whole new different yeah. conversation you know we, we hear people singing about papa was a rolling yeah. stone but there's a lot of other different nuances mm -hmm. and maybe we could talk about that because i actually think that people really don't understand mm -hmm. the power of family yes I don't, I don't think we get it. Like when you look at some of the cultures, and I'm not saying that there's any one culture mm -hmm. um, that's thriving right now that doesn't have its own issues. There's yes, always yes. stuff happening yes. in the back room. Mm -hmm. But here's the reality. When you look at the cultures that are thriving and growing, they don't have systematic really, um, racism, um, racism mm -hmm. happening to them. And they have their families oh intact. Yep. Because remember, here's what happens. Um, if your parents live long enough, mm -hmm. right? Um, maybe one day you will decide that you would like to have your own family. And when I say family, you're already a family right yeah. now, but we're talking about kids. Yeah. Think about your years of life, mm -hmm. Akeem's years of life, okay. your mom's years of life, mm -hmm. your dad's years of life, yeah. and the other side of family. Yes. Calculate how much years that adds up to, mm -hmm. and that is the experience now that you pour into that That's next right. generation. So you're not yes. just looking at the removal of George Floyd. Mm -hmm. George Floyd has his own experiences mm -hmm. that help to enhance yep. his family. Mm -hmm. You've now removed that. Yep. And by removing that, because I don't believe he was married um, to his daughter's mom. Okay. Yeah. So now you 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 may even begin to see a line that is drawn through the sand mm -hmm. where now you've now divided yep. an entire family mm -hmm. through his death. Yeah. So instead of having 500 years mm -hmm. worth of experience and, and knowledge and, and yeah. whatever, whatever, 250. He dropping some stuff today. You know what? I'm so proud of you. No, no, no. You know what it is? It's it the, the water, water you gave me. <laughs> the evidence. Kirkland um, Natural Water, Oga yes. Source, the natural, whatever. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, this thing around how people see us, how we are policed, mm -hmm. how we are killed in the streets, um, the lateral violence, how we deal with each other as a community, yeah. how we perceive each other, it's all traumatic. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that sometimes people... You know, one of the things I, I can't stand, I, I just don't love when people are like, if you work hard, this too can be you. I, I, I don't want to mm. hear that. It's not true. If you'll just lace up your, your bootstraps yeah, and yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't want to hear that anymore because the reality is at the end of the day, this is not about hard work. Mm -hmm. It's about systemic racism. Mm -hmm. It's how we are policed. Yep. It's the idea that I'm guilty before I'm Absolutely guilty. Guilty, and it's the trauma. It's See? the I'm trauma. I'm pulling from what you said. Yeah, man, it's, it's, the, it's, trauma. it's the trauma. It's, 
trickled down. Anyways, this is TMI. Well, these conversations are so good. I can't believe it. It's ah! been 45 minutes already. Yeah. 45 minutes. Um, Guys. Look, we want you to comment. We want please. you to share. We want you to like. We want you to subscribe. Subscribe. Click the bell. We yeah. really want to hear from you, our black community, um, our non-black community. Yeah. We want to hear everything that you have to say. Yeah. But this one on black community, you've let, left me like really thinking. Mm. I, you know, the trauma that has happened. Think about it. Let us know what you think. Do you agree? You just, I 100% agree, but I never looked at it like that. So I'm I'm over here like speechless, even though I'm still talking. So I'm not really speechless. Well, this is what we do. We bounce off of each other. Because yes. at the end of the day, this is our Caribbean Canadian yeah. experience. Yeah. And we have some things that we share in yeah. common. We may not have the same last name, but that's the thing with systematic um, racism. Mm -hmm. We don't have to have the same name to have the same experience. Yeah. And we're hoping that through this conversation, we can begin to break down some of the boundaries yeah. and see our people begin to thrive. Yes. Because black lives, matter. they do matter. Yeah. The shirt. The shirt. More matter. than the shirt. matter. They more than matter. Yes. So until next time. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. That's just TMI. We are thought provoking. Yeah. Thought provoking. Motivational. Motivational. Inspirational. <laughs> TMI. TMI. I'm not doing all the. Were you a cheerleader? I wish. Oh my gosh, I always wanted to be one. I would have cut you from the squad. Well, I really wanted to do gymnastics, but I feel like my parents weren't trying to yeah. put money into that because maybe I would have quit. That's just TMI. <laughs> Until next time. <sighs> yeah.